I'm Harry Markopoulos, author of No One Would Listen. My book is a true detective story about my team and I as we tracked Madoff across two different continents, eight and a half years, dozens of feeder funds, and it was nothing but an organized crime story at its heart. Madoff was an organized crime boss. He had his capos, his chief lieutenants, a remake of the Jewish Mafia of the 30s and 40s with Meyer Lansky and Bugsy Siegel. Only instead of using a Tommy gun, Madoff used a pen, a computer, and a set of golf clubs to lure in his victims. This was very much an undercover operation. If our bosses found out, we would have been told to stop the investigation. And if we had kept going, it would have been undue career risk. But the more important thing was the personal safety risk. We feared for our lives. We feared for our families' lives. I carried a gun wherever I went. I checked beneath my vehicle for bombs before I would get in it. I had to grow eyes in the back of my head in order to get to the other side of this case. Each time I went to the government, I took on increasing risks. I couldn't afford to let them know that I had a team in the field. They thought I was acting alone. I did that to protect my team and their families. We were four men of different faiths, but one common belief, that Madoff had to be stopped. And unfortunately, we were the last line of defense between Madoff and his victims because the SEC wasn't dysfunctional, they were non-functional, and they didn't care. If the SEC had listened to us in 2000, we would have stopped Madoff at well under $10 billion. That he got to $65 billion is a tragedy of epic proportion. We found ourselves up against a small army, and that army kept increasing in size. At the end, Madoff had over 339 different fund of funds feeding him new victims. Over 59 different management companies were involved in over 40 nations. In 2005, the SEC finally listened, and they opened an investigation. But their investigation was off course on day one, and I immediately feared for my life. It reads like fiction, but it's a true story. It really happened to us, to the victims, and to our nation, and it's a permanent stain.